Hello again, everybody! Zack Attack is here with the attack line for Wednesday, June the 19th, 2013. I haven't made an attack line in a few days because of various reasons I don't want to say. You know, I've been busy, you know, you know, I had some things to do, technical flaws as well, a lot of stuff I don't want to talk about. So I haven't made an attack line in a few days. I'm going to tell you about some of the gigs I did over, um, Last weekend, over Father's Day weekend, hope everyone had a great Father's Day weekend. I know it's late, but hey, I gotta say it anyway. Um, we got, of course, the, um, I had two gigs on Saturday. A lot of fuss. My first appearance at Westview Orchards in Wilmington, Michigan. Got the DJ there on Saturday, this past Saturday. And it was a great show, you know, it was, a, it was a, this, this health carnival was going on, this health fair for a bunch of hospitals was sponsoring this event. And they had like a bunch of stuff for the kids, you know, activities, you know, passing up pamphlets and stuff for the adults as well. And it was a good time, you know, it was mostly background music, but still it was great to come back to West for I DJ there is my second full year, and I love just playing there, playing background. And it started to rain when we left. Then that... Gladly and fortunately for me, stopped before my second gig of the day, which was a grab party, my first grab party of the season. It was what I call a slow boner. Now, as far as going and Caitlin Pachette, I did a sister's party last year, and both parties were the same and different. They were both the same because none of the adults liked the party, and the kids took a long time to get going. Well, the differences were at last year's party for Caitlin's sister. They got going around 9.30-10. At this party, it took them to like 10.30 to finally get them dancing. You know, it took a while, but we got some little dancing going. But unfortunately, the second win, unlike Caitlyn's party, uh, Caitlyn's sister's party didn't last as long. It was, a, it was like a few songs and then they were done. You know, like a few line dances and then I couldn't keep them going after those line dances were done. Like Wobble and Wop and all that, like those gangster dances. So there you go. Two gigs over the weekend last weekend on Saturday. Now I got a lot of gigs this weekend. Five gigs in four days. Um, we got a movie night tomorrow night, an outdoor movie night thing. I, I DJ before a movie. And I got a big projector. Thanks, I'm going to miss Tina tomorrow. I'm going to miss Tina for the next couple weeks because of this movie night. Besides a couple. Uh, then after Thursday, I'm doing a special needs dance on Friday. Saturday, got another double header with Westview doing Ryan's one again, which was great last year. And another grand party that same day. And then a grand party on Sunday. So that's my schedule for this weekend. Now, on with your number one. Since I didn't say it on Sunday, your number one movie of the week. Kicking off the punch at the one week. Superman, a bird in a plane. It's not a bird, it's a plane. It's the Man of Steel, Superman. Dave being number one with 120 million. Very impressive. Uh, and it destroyed This is the End, the apocalyptic comedy movie, despite being on the front of Rolling Stone last week. Indeed, got destroyed. Only made 20 million in comparison to the 100 million of Man of Steel. Not bad after a sucky back Superman Returns. So there you go. Now. I'm going to now set of number ones. Uh, Billboard number ones, that is. We got, of course, a new number one album, which is Black Sabbath. For the first time in their epic 40 year career, the legendary British metal band, known to many as the Godfather of Heavy Metal, debuted number one this week with 13, the first album since Never Say Die with Ozzy, for about 33 years or so. It debuted number one in UK, which has been numerous number ones there, but it's the first number one in US for Black Sabbath, so congrats to Sabbath for that honor. While we have a new number one album on the Billboard Hot Top 200, we have a still number one single on the Hot 100. For the second week in a row, it's Robin Thicke with Blurred Lines. Our first number one for him last week, so congrats to both your new and still number one single and album. Now we'll continue the movie train with news on Uncle Man 2. Of course, an anticipated sequel finally released a full trailer today. Now, we've seen the teaser trailer. Now we've seen a trailer and kind of see what the premise of the new movie is all about. 
It's all about the Anchorman, of course, Will Ferrell, along with Steve Carell back in Paul Wood, and the other guy. Those four guys were, of course, in the first movie, a very funny movie. You haven't seen Anchorman 1? It's a great movie. Very funny movie. And they were the top Anchorman of the channel. And now, this new movie, Anchorman 2, as we see in the trailer, which, like I said, is all, all over the internet, specifically Funny or Die, with Ferrell's company site. Um, it said that, well, they're in the 80s now, and the heyday as newscasters are over, and now they are going to be on, like, a news channel a la CNN. Of course, we all know new characters are in it, including Kristen Wiig being in it, apparently Christina Applegate's out, because you saw uh, in the trailer Will Ferrell as, of course, everyone's favorite newscaster, Juan Burgundy, beard, mustache and all. Hitting on a black woman. God, the dinner scene was kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, you guys see the trailer. It looks pretty good. Of course, Kanye West makes a cameo. So we'll see what goes down in Anchorman 2. It's set to come out Christmas weekend. Things like December 20. I think like Christmas Day. I think they said Christmas Day of this year. So I can't wait to see Anchorman 2. Can't wait to see it. Looks very good from the trailer I saw today. So, now. On with news, I call this section Detroit-related news. About Detroit rappers, one announcing a new Detroit show, one announcing his first new song in years, and a new venue in Detroit. Because I live in Detroit. So, that's why I'm making this section Detroit-related. Starting with news on Kid Rock. Now, Kid Rock promised today a major announcement. Well, I had three guesses. One, he was going to announce a new album, which should not be soon because he's on a tour. Number two would be a live DVD, which I was personally hoping for. And number three, which it was, an eighth show at DTE. That's right. Kid Rock has added a monumental eighth show to his stint at DTE this summer. He already sold out seven shows, of course, spanning from August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Then 13th, 14th, and 16th, 13th, 15th, and 16th, and the 19th, now the 20th is now involved. Of course, 20 bucks for every show, for every seat, and ZZ Top was still open. So it's gonna, there's been some controversy about it. You know, people bitch about tickets going on sale and selling out quickly, but hey, hopefully the people who already have tickets for at least more than one show, or at least one show on the seventh stint, doesn't buy tickets again. Give people an opportunity who didn't get tickets the first seven times. So there you go. Kid Rock announcing an eighth and possibly final show at DTE by Knob. Show eight. Tickets go on sale this Saturday morning. And all took them as outlets in Michigan and even Walmart stores. So there you go. Now, all of news on a Detroit rapper who hasn't released anything new in about three years. And he's been frantically, knowingly, at work on his new album now. There was rumors this album was supposed to come out by Memorial Day, but that came and went. Possibly a fall release for a new album from Eminem. Now, Eminem hasn't released anything about his album yet, but today he released a snippet of a new song to be on an upcoming mixtape by. DJ Tony Touch, who is a DJ on Eminem's serious radio station called Serious Shade 45. Now, a new song to be on Tony's mixtape, The Peacemaker 3, coming out July 9th. It's called Sympathy in H. Now, I heard it. It's gritty. I like the beat. You know, it's kind of a fast beat. You know, it's not dancey, not poppy. It's more dark and raw and gritty. And Eminem is... Pretty good on the record, you know, it's like a pretty hard record, you know, pretty much a street record. That's what this Sympathy H is, a street record. And it's a, it's a good, it's a good song, it's, like I said, it's not commercial, but I, I kind of dig it. You know, it's, it's got a little bit of a catchy beat to it, like I said, more greedy, the lyrics are very dark, but it's a, kind of a decent song to at least tease us for his new album whenever that will come out. His first album since Recovery. Of course, Eminem is set to do some one-off shows this summer, some European festivals, and hopefully he may do another tour, a big tour, and another stop in Detroit. So there you go. And if Eminem does come back to Detroit, maybe we can open up the new venue in Detroit. That's right. Um, it's been talked about for years. 
that um, we have a lot of arenas here in Michigan, most of the suburban Detroit area. We have, of course, two big arenas in the city, in suburbs of Detroit. We have the Palace of Auburn Hills, and we have Joe Louis Arena. Of course, Joe Louis Arena is the home of the Red Wings. But for years, of course, and I can tell, I, I, like I said, I live in Michigan, and I can tell that the Joe Louis Arena is more dungy than the Palace. Palace is more classier, nicer, and newer because it was built when I was born, 1988. So 25 this 25 years this year. But Joe Louis has been around since 1979. You can tell the feel of the building. And there's been rumors for years that the owner of the Red Wings, also the owner of the Detroit Tigers, Mike Illich has been wanting for years to build a new venue in Detroit for the Red Wings. Well, his dream is finally coming true. As today, the city of Detroit has announced a $650 million plan for a new arena development for the NHL and a brand new in the, new, in the downtown entertainment and sports district. Plans for the 18,000 seat arena were announced Wednesday today at a meeting of economic development officials to approve the deal. Like I said, Mike Illich, the owner, has been long wanting a new replacement for the 32-year-old Joe Louis Arena. The Red Wings said there will be $367 million in private investing and $283 million in public funds in the complex, which will also include residential, retail, and office space. Developers said the public money will come from existing economic development funds and requires no new taxes, which I'm surprised. I thought there'd be a lot of taxes on this building. That uh, the arena will be located at I-75 and Woodward Avenue, near the near Ford Field and near Comerica Park, and also near the Fox Theater. How are they gonna get another building there? In my opinion, I think they should have just remodeled Joe Louis Arena. Look at Madison Square Garden, in New York. They didn't tear that down, they remodeled it. Especially the most, the biggest thing is the fact that Joe Louis Arena, unlike the Palace, doesn't have suites in the middle. That's what made Palace so innovative, and every arena after the Palace used that same arrangement of having seats in the middle of the arena. But Joe Louis has suites all the way at the top. And now this new arena will probably have more technological things, more high-tech stuff, more screen stuff, a big screens. More, more techie things than the Joe Louis Arena. Not much has been done to the place besides adding a screen, which is more older than the arena itself. So, uh, it's very interesting that this is is happening. It's supposed to create about eight thousand new construction jobs, about three or five thousand real jobs when it comes to working the arenas, and uh, like they're gonna like open up businesses and renovate things. Like, oh, there's like. It's part of an entire plan to renovate the entertainment district in Detroit. Like they're going to remodel some things, but of course the biggest thing is building this new venue. There is no word on when this new arena will open up, but I'm guessing it'll be about... Try to guess how long it took for Ford Field to be up. About three years. I'm guessing about 2015-16. So we'll see when the new arena and the name. They even announced the name of the place. Is it going to be called Joe Louis Arena again? Or it's going to be called, like, the Detroit Arena. Who knows when the arena we built, and when it'll be open, and what the name of it is. But at least we know now, like it or not, warranted or not, there's going to be a new venue for the Detroit Red Wings. And, of course, they're not just host the Red Wings. They'll probably host other concerts as well. Try to bring back concerts to Detroit instead of Auburn Hills at the Palace. So, there you go. Detroit Red Wings gets a new arena. Opening to be announced. Uh, that is it for the attack line for today. We'll see you all later. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the news from Zach. Thank you all very much for watching. Yes, yeah.